what's going on? This is what I want you to do. I want you to go below and sign up on the email list because we're going to get into some new training for beginners. The uh, price would be something you can afford and we're going to get into that. So that list is below. So go sign up on that. And once I get it tuned up, I'll be sending out notifications. All right. So what I'm going to talk about is starting in business from scratch. And this is one of the things like, let me explain to you one of the things I'm doing right now. I'm running some ads and it's for the art of holding building business credit course. Right. And essentially the first set of ads, we start running those last Friday and we were starting to get responses. I had to redo the ads because here's the thing that I'm getting. I'm getting people who, and these people are not stupid. They're not stupid. They have bad credit and little to no income. Literally, I had this guy, credit score 591. He isn't working and he's trying to get funding. He's trying to get funding. And it, it got me to thinking, because I was sitting there like, why are all these people who would not go into a bank and try to get a credit card or coming into my ad? And I had to go back and look at my ad and I left out some critical, critical components. So we're redoing all of those ads and we're going to take those ads down. And it got me to thinking uh, this morning, there was someone else that came in. She wanted to get into real estate and th this whole thing of people who would put CEO, president, whatever nomenclature after their name, when they don't even have a business, they don't even have a business. They're not actually doing anything. They're not, you know, it, it, it's just crazy, right? So let's kind of go through and walk through the whole process of how I started my first successful business. Before that, let's go ahead and talk about the stuff when I was in the military. I tried to start not one, not two, not three, but four, not, but five businesses and none of them worked out. And you know, now I'm at the point where I can look back and I can see exactly why they didn't work out. I didn't know how to start a business. I didn't know how to do sales. There were so many things I didn't know how to do. And I was trying to go ahead and start this business because I simply wanted more money. And I didn't understand that's really one of the worst reasons to ever start a business is to get more money. I know, I know, I know it, it is because it literally you start a business to help people. You start a business to position people to have a better life. You, you start a position to solve problems. Like uh, I had a plumbing issue where one of the faucets because got one of these oval tubs and the faucet comes out the floor, right? And it curves up and goes into the tub, right? Well, that sucker wasn't working. And then a plumber came in and fixed it. And I felt like the best thing ever because this plumber actually knew how to do something that I didn't know how to do. It literally took him about an hour and a half to change that pipe because they had to do certain things and all this other stuff. So that's the reason you start a business because like plumbers who come in and fix stuff, you're pretty much, you know, they come in, they do the work, you're happy. That's the reason you start a business. They come in and do the work. And this is one of the things that I, I want to talk about is Many people, and once again, I understand you're watching the internet just like I am, feel that they can start a business and go to a hundred thousand dollars in 30 days from scratch with no money, bad credit, using some internet tactics. Here's my thought on that. And we're getting ready to get into credit repair. Uh, I'm going to release that at some point. I saw someone who actually was showing a person's credit report that had a 200 point increase, right? Now, years and years ago, I had bad credit after my divorce. And what I did is I came home and I would go to work and I would come home and I would work on my credit for an hour to two hours every day for eight months. And this is how I solved my credit issues, right? So I know a lot about credit and I know that if you have bad credit and that's it, you've just got bad credit and you know you have no positive trade lines, you can remove all that bad credit off of your credit report and your score is not going to change because you have no positive trade lines, right? So for this 200 point thing to happen, they had to remove a bunch of bad credit and this person needed to have positive trade lines. 
and they never showed the positive trade lines. They just showed the score. They never got into the finer details, which kind of makes me think that this presentation was false or something that was made up because typically, you know, you do credit repair. It's something that happens over time. And one of the things I'm seeing is everyone's looking for speed, 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 speed. Uh, like, hey, I just started this business, you know, 30 days, in 30 days, I'm making 100K. Uh, that's not going to happen. When I started my first intellectual property business, it took me three years to get to a million, three years. And one of the things I'm consistently seeing is people have this business mindset. Uh, my name is such and such CEO. My name is such and such president. And they absolutely have no business. They have no business. They have no customers. They have the mindset. They have the orientation of starting a business. So let's go ahead and talk about what would make your first business successful. Once again, I was in the military. I tried to start five businesses. They all failed. And then I got out the military and I went through this whole process of working the job. And then that backfired on me. And then I actually got a job that taught me how to set appointments, a job, not my own business. And then I got the next job. I learned how I knew how to set appointments and the next job I went on sales calls. And the third job, I had to gather leads, set appointments and go on sales calls. I learned all of this stuff. And then my first business was me actually doing what I did for my job. And it was successful. I wonder why I didn't have to learn anything. I didn't have to do anything different. I already had the embedded skills to make that business successful. I knew how to set appointments. I knew how to find leads. I knew how to go on sales appointments. I knew how to sell. So that that first business was a replication of something I was already doing. Now, this is where people get into trouble. And this is, in my opinion, they have a job that they hate. And I don't know about this whole thing of having a job that I hate. Uh, I, I've not had a job that I've hated. It's been so long. It's been so long since I've had a regular job. But I don't remember ever hating my job. I don't ever remember that. But typically, if you have a job, you have a skill set, you know how to do something and you want to get into your own business, ideally doing what you were doing on your job is one of the best ways for you to start a business. I'll, I'll tell you a story of someone I used to work for. He actually worked for another company and he was tasked with going out and getting office furniture. And he started calling and looking and looking and the price of new office furniture was very expensive. They didn't want to pay that. So what he did is he found a lot of companies that had office furniture in their offices that they didn't want. Because here, here's the thing. When you have cubicle furniture, there's something that's called an installation cost. So if there's cubicle furniture in the office, someone paid to have that cubicle furniture installed. Guess what you got to do to remove that cubicle furniture? You got to pay the same uh, installation cost to get it out of there. And that was kind of the big holdups because a lot of these companies wanted this furniture gone, but they didn't want to pay that cost because the furniture was sitting in a spot that was empty, that was not making money. So what's, what he did is he went in and he found a company that had these cubicles. He got a group of people from the company. They went in, they took all the furniture out and then they installed it in their new location. And this was like, and he, he created a company. He literally found all of these office buildings that had all this furniture that they just wanted it gone and he would go in and remove it for free and then he would turn around and resell it. And that's how he started his company. So why did that company work? Because he started the company doing something he already knew how to do. He knew, he knew how to go get the furniture and over time there was many changes in this whole process. There was a lot of changes, but typically, and this is one of the things we're going to get into the training is if there's some type of business, you want to get into it. My concept is go ahead, 
Get a job in that industry first. Get a job in that industry first. Because like with real estate, and this is some all things real talks about, a lot of people get into real estate, they have no experience. They have no money. And then they essentially get in a position where they're in a position where they're gonna lose money. Because they, they don't know how to do real estate. Let me go ahead and give you an example. Let's say you're a carpenter and you're a really, really good carpenter. And not only are you a carpenter, but you're a good manager. And you know how to take a crew into a house and fix up this house and get it done really, really well. Uh, literally, you got people lined up waiting for you to be free because you know how to get things done and you have a track record. There are people who are lined up waiting for you to come do their jobs who are going to pay you because you have those experiences. And this, this is one of the things that I'm seeing with people who are answering my ad. They have no experience. And there's, there's nothing wrong with not having no experience, but they're completely 100% unaware of how lending and funding works. No one is going to give you a lot of money when you have, one, a bad credit score, two, you have no money. No one's gonna give you any money. Even the predatory lenders are not gonna give you money. Like, uh, I did this last year and I'll never do it again because uh, this is what I call the predatory lenders. Um, if you borrow 20,000, you gotta pay them $30,000 back. They have some very high usage fees. Uh, I had a loan for 150,000. Guess what I had to pay them? 160. So essentially, I got way more money for a less cost than going with this, uh, these, these high leverage. I, I don't even know if you I don't even know the term you call them broker loans because essentially what they do is they give you the money and then they hit your checking account every day, Monday through Friday. They're pulling out money through your checking account every day. It is one of the craziest things I've ever saw. And this is one of the loans I would not recommend that you get because number one, they're very expensive. Number two, you know, if you don't have a lot of money in your checking account and they go in and try to get a debit and you can get you a, what is it? Uh, a, what is it? NSF, a non-sufficient funds charge. I mean, it's just crazy. But even the predatory lenders, because the predatory lenders want to see not one, not two, but three months of bank statements before they give you any money. So that's the predatory lenders. The, um, I don't even think these folks look at your, your FICO score. They look at your act income and activity, and but they charge a lot. They charge so much for these loans. So even the predatory lenders are not going to give you money if you do not have a business checking account displaying that you've been making money, they're not going to give you money. They're just not. So one of the things that you, you have to do, and this is something we're going to be talking about during the, um, let's say, let's call it the 90 day business blueprint. We're going to be talking about how to position yourself in the future for business funding. We'll, we'll get into all of that stuff because one of the things that has to happen is you have to be positioned to get business funding. And this is one of the reasons, like literally I, I, I messaged my ad guy this morning and I said, look, when are the new ads gonna be ready and all this other stuff because we might as well just stop running those ads because those ads are bringing us just trash, just trash people. Uh, and when I say trash, unqualified leads, bad credit scores, no income. That is a trash lead when you're trying to get them into an application to get them business credit. These folks will not get any business credit. So one of, the, one of the, the big issues that I see is a lot of people are not really looking at the things that they need to do to start a successful business. Because, you know, I walked through that whole process when I started my first intellectual property business through Conundrum Publishing. It took me three years to get to an M, you know, and I feel that that was exceptional. I feel that was fast because I, even though I had a traditional brick and mortar business, I never got to an M. I never got to an M and I had extremely high overhead costs. I was leasing a enterprise truck. I had bought a pickup truck. 
had two warehouses, had the cost of buying goods. There was a lot of things that had to be managed and we never got close to, we got, we got close to a mem, got to 950, I think, close to, close, but, and that was the best year ever. And then we, next year, we didn't get close to that. I think next year we did like 820. So once again, with the intellectual property, and this is something else that we will get into in the future, of how to set up your intellectual property business. But first of all, we must go ahead and get you guys stabilized, set up, and put in the proper position for you to actually start a successful business. So go below, hit that link, sign up on the email list, and I will see you guys in the next one.